Hey everybody, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and I want to talk to you today about how I'm setting up my 2021 bullet journal and planner setup. This all begins at the end of the year. My birthday's in December, so it's always a really reflective time for me. And this year, even more than ever. With 2020 feeling like many lifetimes in one year, I've been really thinking about what I want my next year system to look like. So this starts off with the end of my last journal. I had some pages left in an uh, Archer and Olive bullet journal, so I used that to sort of do some reflection and mapping out and thinking. 2020 revealed a lot of chaos and in terms of the planner community there's so many different things when i started working from home the pandemic hit circumstances were changing that i was trying really hard to reclaim some of my peace and part of that was looking at other people's planning systems and being enamored with what seemed like planner peace with that system and what I realized after spending a lot of money <laughs> was that I wanted the piece that I thought they were feeling, not the actual planner systems. So it, it's been a really big process of reflecting and coming back to what I know works better for me. And I'm going to be implementing that now next year. So taking some notes as to what were the wins, what were the places that I found flow? What were the places that I felt a lot of friction? What was it about that part of the system that was causing me a lot of friction? Some of the things I learned this year are about my energy during the day, so I want to plan for that. I love using stickers and I'm going to continue doing that and be unapologetic about it. With all of the uncertainty, I found myself spending a lot of time doing what I call procrasti planning, and I want to spend more time executing and being proactive. So that is a huge mindset shift going into 2021. So with that as the backdrop, let me walk you through what my setup is. First, I'll say that I do work full time. I'm an educator in higher education, and then I also do, you know, this content creation and art on the side. So there's a lot of pieces that I'm keeping track of. These things may not apply to you. So be thoughtful about what your context is. I am not a mother. I don't have pets to take care of. So the things that are applicable to me have to be translated to whatever your context is. So in my situation, I do have the privilege of working from home, and with that it makes it easier for me to use multiple notebooks. For work, I work with a heavily Google Drive team, and so there's a lot of things that I have for work that are strictly on Google Drive, but I do have analog pieces to my work system as well, because writing is how I think, and I process that in a different way when I actually use a pen and paper. I do combine my work and personal tasks all together in this everyday bullet journal. I also have my notes that are collaborative in Google Drive and I use two different notebooks for my work process. One is my teaching notebook. Since I teach, I like to keep notes as to how students are doing, things they say, who's absent. That goes in a separate notebook. I don't need it to be referenceable all the time, but it's nice to have one place I know that um, will contain that information. This is a Suki bullet journal from Notebook Therapy online and I actually really love this notebook. The pages are really great um, if you are looking for an alternative to some of the notebooks that are out there. And on a teaching note, I know that some teachers talk about doing lesson plans in a notebook and honestly, I write curriculum for other people so I keep that online as well. But if I want to work out things like, okay, what is the order? What are the, the main topics uh, for myself? And then be able to translate to others. I will write it out in a notebook. This is a Baron Fig notebook that I've been using for my work notes. So if it's just for me for reference and me jotting down my own thoughts, I'm going to put it in this notebook knowing that I can always go back and look for those notes in here. Again, if I have to share it, it's going to go on Google. It's just way easier that way. What I'm going to be doing more this year is doing a dedicated index, which is using a special index for different projects and then keeping notes about which um, notes pages are under that project in that index. So I'm going to actually give that a shot this year so that I can quick flip through and see like, oh, my marketing notes are on page 9, 30, and 42 and be able to flip through that way. 
before I get into my 2021 bullet journal setup, I do want to talk about this other notebook that I have, which is for reference lists. And I know that I go through maybe two or three notebooks a year, and there are lists that I'll make that I don't want to lose and have to migrate from bullet journal to bullet journal. So I use a long-term collections bullet journal catch-all for that. Inside I have a half letter disc bound. I like the discs. I've been using discs for a long time actually and have just returned to them for a planner situation because you can punch the pages, you can remove, rearrange pages and be able to put things in order. So in this I have the things that are more long term like a master to do. I have goals in here. I have a work tab for certain things. I have a maintenance tab for things like cleaning and referencing for like plant care. I have a wellness tab with inserts and dashboards from my cloth and paper subscription box. And finance, that's a really big one where I'm kind of working out like budgets and how I want to plan out my known expenses. There's a second wave of weddings coming and so I want to plan well for that so that I don't have to feel super stressed about those things. Looking at buying a house, so there's a tab for that. There's lists in here which are for long-term lists like gifts, Christmas, etc, etc. And then there's a meals tab for things that I like to make on a regular basis. So this is where I keep things that again I don't want to migrate from notebook to notebook and doing a little bit of my alcohol inks on some of these dashboards from cloth and paper. So that is my long-term collections. Let's get to my everyday January setup. Here's what I've got going for 2021. I've been using this for maybe two months now. I'm not going to be switching notebooks. There's still a lot of paper. I'm going to show you some of the elements in here and you can take what you want, leave the rest. So this is a bullet journal edition two notebook. You can see my review of that on my other video there is this intentions page. So right now it is blank because I'm stuck on my word of the year. I'm not going to force it. If it comes, it comes. I'm trying to think of something that's a little bit closer to something like clarity. This index page, I don't really use an index, so I'm using it as more of an inbox page using this Avery tab so I can quick flip to it. I make a lot of post-it notes still, so this is where I'm going to be sticking those and then processing it later into the right place. This is me trying to use a future log and messing it up. <laughs> Instead, I kind of landed on doing an Alistair method, which means that for my future log, I'm doing the next semester. So that's listed here. And then I can jot down tasks right here and then dot the month that those things are supposed to happen. And then every monthly, I'm going to be able to refer to this list to pull these tasks into my monthly. So this page, I'm going to just be putting January here, and then I'll do my word of the year just so that I can break up visually the middle of the notebook. So normally what I like to do is go from big picture to small picture, and I like to anchor in my own vision of my life. And a lot of times people have like a five-year vision or a five-year plan. That's not really something that I like to do. So I recently did this page that I keep in my long-term collections notebook called The Good Life, where I just break down what are the things that really matter to me when it comes to living a good life. And this helps me determine a lot of the other things that I like to do in order to fulfill this vision. Another spread that I really like doing is just generally overviews. I have this need to see the big picture before I can even begin to lay out the small. In different ways, I use big overviews like this monthly for the year and this is for example for my day job and breaking down like what are the tasks that I know happen in every cycle and then being able to refer to this so you can kind of see where your anchor points are throughout the year so I've done this for my personal life in terms of like trips and weddings and big events or you know money wise like where's your money going getting a sense of that for the entire year is really really helpful for me again to know where my energy is going translating some of those things over into what i like to call a gantt chart i don't think it's actually a gantt chart but it's a timeline where i like to see what is going on for the year this is my work up here and these are th personal things down here and then broken down over the entire year just to get a sense of what's going on. 
not everything is going on all the time. So seeing when the heavy times and light times are. So one of my jobs is to teach a class. And so the busiest times are where I've highlighted the more intense color that the beginnings and endings are always really intense because of grading and setting up. So I've marked those and then have the hash marks for when it's happening. It's still a regular part of my day, but it's not a super stressful or intensive part. So I've done that for a bunch of different parts of my job and filled those in. I added some dark lines because it's going to be hectic in the, these particular project areas. We're moving and I'm writing a chapter of a journal. And then I did the same thing for my personal down here. And what's cool about this is that you can see vertically when your light times are and when your really stressful times are. When you're planning anything new, knowing what your anchors of the year are, I can look to this and be like, I better not schedule anything in May and June <laughs> because there's so much happening. Whereas maybe in February, it's a little bit easier and just being able to, to see where there's more space. I added some space at the end here for notes in case like, oh, for notes about moving on page 92 and 93. So that I could just turn to that where I've made some notes. I like to keep things pretty simple. I'm not a big doodler. So these are the kinds of things that I have in my journal where it's really just contexts. And I like to have loose categories in order to organize my thoughts. I just need a place to put this thing down. And in my head, it feels really jumbled. But then when I'm able to like put things in their place in a context on paper, that's where it helps me clear my mind. So when we zoom in then onto January, I am, I've tried a monthly many, many times. It's never stuck. Um, and even then each month looks a little bit different. And I plan out my monthly actually in the passion planner on the grid, because that's where I do my meal planning and just looking at the time. But I'm going to give this a shot. It's a Frankenlight log that I borrowed from Brian Hazard. And I wanted to see if I could make this work for me again. And he does things, you know, down the line, dates one, two, three, four, five, and I just can't see time that way. So I adjusted it so it's more across like this. So it mimics a Google Calendar. Each of these is a different context. And again, loose categories, so I can kind of plug it back in. You can check out his video and next to learn about how the Franklin Light layout works, but essentially it helps you rapid log the things that are going on, assign it a letter, and then you put that letter under the date that it has to happen. So you can assign it to a date or you can put it into a week and know that you have to get it done at some point that week or some point this month or maybe sometime next month. And this line here represents a space where I'm going to try and keep track of some habits, but in a more minimal way. And I don't remember who started this idea, but essentially you create a star day by assigning each of these hash marks to a particular habit. And then each day that you do them, like, oh, I went to bed by 1230 AM. Notice how every time I set this habit, it gets later and later. <laughs> But 12.30 a.m., then I would go into that date and just mark that diagonal line. And then the more habits I complete, the more close to a star day it becomes. And we'll see what happens by the end of next month. I just want to create the habit of going back to the monthly, pulling out the tasks from the future log, and making sure that I am indeed being intentional about these goals. Because then each week I'll have to refer back to this to pull out any relevant things I listed here to put into my weekly. Something else that's really important in my job is that I work in a team. So I work with instructors and then I also work with students and I have teammates to work on stuff with. So I need to keep track of a lot of different aspects. And in this case, I'm using the at. I, I saw it in Brian's video. I don't know if he was the original person that came up with it, but this allows me to quick find a place for me to jot down like, oh, I need to tell people about this. And write it down here. Oh, I need to follow up with the student about this and write it down and being able to refer back to it, cross it off. Again, my style, very simple, add some color. So it's not completely minimal, um, but I just like simple places to put my thoughts. And then each week I am going to try this out where I do a contained brain dump. Matt Ragland talks about having a lot of the weekly tasks listed into one list. I need the categories. So loosely buckets for me to plop thoughts into, being able to brain dump some of the things that are on my mind, but then being able to go back to the monthly, being able to pull those tasks in 
again, I want to be more proactive and be more big picture so I don't get swept up in the urgent every day. So doing this, I hope will help me do that because then when Monday hits, I had this bad habit of just jumping right into Monday and listing a million different things. And instead I could do this and then pull in the most important ones each day rather than having everything build up on Monday and then never checking them off until Thursday or Friday. So I'm going to give that a shot. My dailies, I'm still going to do like I have been doing where I have the time chart on one side, my top tasks at the top, and then other reflections, journaling, and notes underneath. I'm trying to keep it simple so that I have an overview of what's happening and make progress toward the things that matter in my life rather than spinning my wheels and doing a lot of that procrastinate planning, like I said. Sorry if you were looking for some inspiration about themes because I don't do those, but hopefully I've given you some practical ideas that you can apply and know that pretty and productive can be in the same sentence. Let me know down below what spreads that you're doing, what are the critical layouts to your function. Let me know, ask questions. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!